What's up, potty people, and welcome back to my channel. So today, I am very, very excited to talk about this product. We are talking about the Revlon One Step Hair Dryer and Volumizer. This thing is magical. Basically, this is a blow dryer and round brush in one. This thing has made me actually want to blow dry my hair more and I will purposely blow dry my hair just to use this because it is so good. So I do want to give you a little bit of the details, prices, descriptions, stuff like that before we get into the actual demo because I do want to show you guys how I use this and how I get a very, very smooth blowout. So it says, it's ionic technology, gives you quick results and leaves your hair looking smooth. This Revlon hair dryer and volumizer is coated with ceramic material to distribute heat evenly throughout each strand. It's mixed nylon pins and bore bristles grip well to boost volume and its overall design limits heat damage. So I've seen this product range from about $45 to about $60. $60 is pretty much the going rate. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it at Ulta, Target, Walmart, pretty much anywhere that Revlon hair styling tools are sold. I will say one con to this, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out of the way, is that this is pretty big and they don't come in multiple sizes. I hope that this starts gaining so, so much momentum that Revlon comes out with different sizes or at least different attachments for it because I would really, really enjoy a smaller size. And if it were a smaller size, you could also curl your hair with that. Which brings me to my next point, which is this is mainly a volumizing type product because it's so big, you're not gonna get a whole lot of curl out of it. Because it's so big, I don't see people with short hair being able to use this. When I say short hair, I mean like, if your hair is any shorter than maybe like right here, you probably aren't gonna be able to get much benefit out of this unless you just wanted to use it for your crown, just a round brush and give you some volume right up here at the top. So yeah, I do have fine hair. It is pretty dense and it's pretty damaged and it's dry on the ends. Um, and the reason I say that is because usually I avoid blow dry my hair at all costs. But I have talked to people that have thick, very, very dense, curly and coarse hair and they swear by this as well. <sighs> this just makes your hair so extremely smooth. And my problem also when I blow dry my hair usually like with just a paddle brush or whatever, and even when I've tried to blow dry it with round, like an actual round brush, my hair, if it's straight, will not hold a style. My ends just start looking really see-through and thin and scraggly and all that body and volume and all that work that I went through to get that blow out at home, it just falls flat. So one thing I found with this is that my hair will stay smooth and straight and looking fresh for about two, two and a half days. So yeah, you do have a cool low and high setting. I blow dry my hair on low. I don't really feel like you need to go up to high unless your hair is like super dense, super curly, you know, and just really coarse. So if you have fine, thin or like medium density hair, you probably don't really need to go up to high. I just feel like that would be too much. And plus I also feel like if you turn on to high, it kind of puts out a lot of air and it makes your hair kind of frizz out and it kind of blows out the cuticle a little bit to where it makes it look more frizzy and less smooth and laid down. So when I keep it on low, I don't have that problem and it blow dries it extremely fast. So like I said, usually with just a regular blow dryer and a paddle brush, it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes. With this, I can get my hair done in like five to seven minutes. With this product or whenever you round brush it with an actual round brush or just blow drying in general, I highly, highly recommend wetting to your hair is about 80, 75, 80% dry just because for several reasons, you're gonna be putting so much more heat damage on your hair. Whenever your hair is really wet, like dripping wet as soon as you get out of the shower, that's when it's the most fragile. So that's when it's the most prone to breakage and split ends. And plus, whenever you're round brushing or doing any kind of like repetitive hand motions like that, especially when you're, you know, up here and you're trying to get all that volume and all that body. If your hair is really, really wet, you're wasting your time. So I'm actually gonna go damp my hair a little bit just because it will work with this. Like there's still a little bit of dampness like underneath my hair, but I'm gonna show you like, I just want it to be more fresh, so I'll be right back. Okay, that should suffice. So it's extremely important to section your hair with any kind of heat styling tool, whether it be a blow dryer, curling iron, flat iron, curling wand, whatever. If for nothing else, just to apply your heat protectant more evenly, just because if you leave it all down like this, it's just getting on the top layer. And you could say, well, I can lift it up and do that. And yes, technically that's better than just applying it all over the very top layer of your hair and going, but you're gonna be able to really distribute it evenly if you section your hair. So I'm gonna go in with my Kenra Platinum Blow Dry Spray. I've really been enjoying this one. I actually use this one for curling my hair, pretty much everything now. It adds a really nice shine to it. I will say it can weigh your hair down if you apply too much, like you really don't need much of this. 
And it doesn't matter what I do when it comes to heat styling tools. Like I always start in the back and work my way forward so that whenever I get done with a section, I can throw it back and move forward and not have to go over the same section a thousand times. So once you have your heat protectant in, just go ahead and brush it all through just to make sure it's evenly distributed. You don't wanna go in with too thick of a section just because you're gonna have to go over that section numerous times because if it's too thick, then the heat isn't getting through the entire layer evenly so you may find that it falls faster like you have to go back over it numerous times so it's really not difficult all i do is just start the scalp and just kind of slowly pull my way down and as it starts drying i start spinning it like this to where it kind of gives it a little bit of a curve and especially when it comes to like getting closer to the crown or like the scalp i kind of hold my hand underneath it so that it kind of cools a little bit in my hand so that it forms to the little the hump in my hand if that makes any sense this gets very very hot now i will say something else i forgot to point out about this i really appreciate is the fact that this right here is completely cool so you can touch this which makes it really nice because you can kind of help your other hand curl it and twirl it and do all kinds of round brushy technique type things and something else i forgot to mention literally as soon as i started um, is that whenever i kind of get it more and more dry i start kind of pushing it upward a little bit just because I want it to be as voluminous as possible at the scalp. So yeah, I start down here and I'm twirling it the entire time. And it's also getting some of this section right here into, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be super precise. As it gets drier and drier, I start kind of working my way upward with it. You don't really need to leave this in your hair very long. If you leave it where it is so hot, if you leave it in, you're gonna get a lot more damage. You could probably see I continuously am moving it. I'm not just letting it sit there like that because then you've got the air blowing it up and again, you're blowing the cuticle, you're blowing the split ends out and you're kind of fraying it a little bit to where it's not gonna be as silky and smooth. And you could do two layers if you really wanted to, but because I like to do a lot of volume up here and I really want to be strategic, I just do three. So basically like wherever your, the arch of your brow is back, just to get a little tiny section, like a little mohawk section up here, just, just enough to where it's gonna fit in, like you're gonna go horizontally. We are almost done and hopefully you can see how much shine there is. It looks so healthy and just makes me feel like a new woman. So now it comes to the top and this is what I feel like is the most important because this is what's going to create all your volume and all your body because everything else just kind of lays underneath. And again, you want to work in smaller sections because the thicker the section, the less like you, you're not going to be able to get as close to the scalp to get the most body and volume. The hair naturally lives like that okay so if you pull it forward this is if you pull it straight up let's let's go over a little bit of science a little education here if you pull it straight up that's going to give you some volume as well but not as much as if you were to take it like that that is a complete over direction so that's what i'm going to do and something else i forgot to mention is that i'm pretty much going right in between my parts so i'm not going on this side only and doing what we did before and kind of holding it vertical like that i'm combining this entire section so yeah, I'm taking the pieces from the mohawk section of both layers and my hair is getting pretty dry already. Like I, I, I waited too late to do this video, but typically it would be a little bit more damp and it would do a lot better. And then also, if you want to get a little bit closer to the root on this side, you can go on the opposite side just to dry it. And that'll also give a little bit of volume as well, but I always end going behind the, the piece. So it's taken me a while to do this video. It got dry on me, so I went to go re-wet it and I kind of I kind of missed I messed up some spots back here too. So we'll get those in just a second. So I'm gonna take this section right here so you can probably see it's just a little triangle section, about like that. And we're gonna treat this like it's a fringe. We're gonna do the same thing, but I'm really gonna focus this in the front like this. And I'm really gonna over-direct it kind of like a unicorn horn. And when I get done, I'm gonna hold it right here 
with my arm underneath it. I'm gonna sit there for several seconds, a little bit more than what I've done for the rest of my hair. And then I'm gonna let it dry in front of my face like this. And you can probably already see just a little bit like how it just already kind of forms that little hump right there. And it's not even, it doesn't even have heat on it yet. So we're gonna leave it there for one to two minutes. You can sit here longer if you want, but what that's gonna do is it's gonna cool this way. And then when you push it back, you're gonna get that like kind of feathery, like whew, that swoosh. I'm gonna hold it here and just chill. Okay, so I've been sitting here for about three minutes like this now. I know it's funny looking, but you're gonna thank me later. Okay, so I'm gonna finally lift up. And as you can see, it gives you that really cool swoop. Like this is what I've always been, like I've always tried to go for like this swoop right here. Now I will say, fair warning, if you have any like baby hairs like this or breakage or whatever that stick up, it can make some split ends or short pieces of hair kind of stick up a little bit. So I just recommend going in with a hairspray um, or a serum or whatever and just kind of laying them down. Like I usually don't have a big problem with it, but especially where I have one like right here, I focus a lot of the heat and a lot of my attention on that spot. So it's getting a lot of heat. So it's really kind of fraying it a little bit. Before I do anything else, let me show you what it looks like from the side. And like my hair is very piecey and very like stringy whenever it's straight. So most people's hair would look a lot better than this, but yeah, hopefully you can see how much body and fullness I have. And it literally looks like I took a round brush to it. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel to stick around and then hit the notification bell to make sure that you see all my videos. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Mwah.